Hello everybody, this is Rachna once again and I am back with Once Upon a Time just as I had promised that I would make a detailed video which would be for senior classes. So now let's understand Once Upon a Time by Gabriel Okara. Well children, just as I had told you uh, about Gabriel Okara that he was born on 24th April 1921 and being a Nigerian poet and novelist he was too much involved uh, with whatever used to take place uh, being a colony. You see like Nigeria being a colony of the Britishers he was very much involved with whatever used to happen. So well children uh, you can well understand, you know, uh, his age and everything like being, uh, you know, born on 24th April 1921 and dying at uh, on 25th of March 2019. This really is a very long span. And a person who is a poet and a novelist is definitely going to be more involved with the nitty gritties of things that go on around him. So, uh, I think I have already covered a lot of detail about the poet uh, in my previous video. So, I wouldn't speak too much on that. We can go ahead, I guess. Right? So, uh, let's go through the poem. Once again, let's read it. Right? Once upon a time, son, they used to laugh with their hearts and laugh with their eyes. But now they only laugh with their teeth while the eye, ice block eyes search behind my shadow. There was a time, indeed, they used to shake hands with their hearts. But that's gone, son. Now they shake hands without hearts while their left hands search my empty pockets. Feel at home. Come again, they say, and when I come again and feel at home, once, twice, there will be no thrice, for then I find doors shut on me. So I have learned many things, son. I have learned to wear my many faces, like dresses, home face, office face, street face, host face, cocktail face, with all their conforming smiles like a fixed portrait smile and I have learned too to laugh with only my teeth and shake hands without my heart. I've also learned to say goodbye what I mean good riddance to say glad to meet you without being glad and to say it's been nice talking to you after being bored. But believe me son I want to be what I used to be. When I was like you, I want to unlearn all these muting things. Most of all, I want to relearn how to laugh. For my laugh in the mirror shows only my teeth like a snake's bare fangs. So show me, son, how to laugh. Show me how I used to laugh and smile once upon a time when I was like you. So well, children. Let's understand this poem bit by bit, right? Uh, we'll go through a few things uh, first. Uh, let's understand that when we're talking about this poem, this is uh, more of, you know, uh, something, it's, it's more of a narrative, you see. It's something like a father is telling his son, right? He's talking to him. When we go through this poem, we feel as if he's talking. To his son. So uh, let's understand that this particular poem is a free verse poem. When I say free verse, uh, you won't see that the the last uh, word sounds, you know, of every line they tend to, uh, you know, relate to each other. Or well, when I say relate, relate, I mean they don't rhyme, right? So this is a free verse poem, and it has forty three lines. They're broken up into seven stanzas, right? So let's see what the first stanza says. 
the first line suggests that this poem is going to be based on a story is a kind of story or a fairy tale here the speaker is addressing his son so this could well be a father being uh, beginning to explain how things used to be how people they used to love with their hearts and eyes back in the past hmm you know it's in contrast to nowadays laughter is more of a show of teeth and the eyes are cold and looking for something other than the real person so already the present is being judged by the past you see and from what we can gather from these first six lines the speaker prefers the attitude of the people from the past there is the feeling that negative change is here right so let's understand the second stanza the art of shaking hands has also changed in the past a greeting was genuine a person welcomed for who they were but nowadays people shake hands with one eye on your status your financial status you know what you really are in the society people are no longer genuinely warm towards others people are on the uh, on the other hand they want to make they wanting to get something from you right in the third stanza people invite you round to their homes making out as if uh, you're important to them but if you don't measure up socially or your status isn't quite right you're not invited again so you see the alien the alienation continues people nowadays are artificial and fickle because of the change in culture right and uh, children here there's something very nice you see is uh, even though this this entire poem is a satire on the society but then just come to think of it you know the way he is saying that okay they they say good riddance yeah they they say goodbye and at the same time when he is saying that you know they say that okay come again feel at home these these particular words you know they make you feel and uh, the way he has said it you know if you if you are trying to understand it in a slightly lighter mood you might even tend to laugh and say really this actually happens because you would easily be able to you know relate it to somebody who's next door neighbor you say oh you see isn't that person just like what he's saying right so actually you can relate you know it's not something that we cannot relate to our neighbors or somebody around us right so this is what he says then uh, the first three stanzas you know uh, the the outline is that the speaker's perception of changing culture and attitudes and values in this country right so this fourth stanza describes how the speaker himself had to change and learn in order to comply to the society he used he uses a comparison faces to dresses to highlight the various personas he took on uh, all the all the while while he was smiling and letting ha- things happen you know the repeated use of faces uh, sorry the repeated use of face affixed to various places and situations is highly visual so let's get on to the fifth stanza he also has become adept to the heartless handshake and hollow toothy smile plus he knows how to deceive people with his uh, farewells and welcomes and false uh, politeness when actually he doesn't really mean that basically he's saying that he has become an integral part of this new culture is being quite an education for him the sixth stanza says but he is not happy being a conformist he wants to regain a former innocence 
the youngsters still hold. He wants no part of this new culture and all things, all these muting things. The word muting over here means uh, to dedean in this context. Okay? What he wants most is to be able to laugh in innocence again. He likens himself to a snake. His teeth hold something toxic, even dangerous. Right? Then in the sixth stanza, he comes clean, you know. He wants the sun to show him how to regain this lost innocence. And this, this uh, extends uh, and he says that, you know, he, he wants to laugh and smile like the way he used when he was a younger child, when he was young, when he was carefree and the culture didn't really encourage him to, uh, you know, become what he is right now. So basically when we see, when we go through this, we understand that um, the poet, he is actually, you know, not very happy with whatever he has become and when he sees his child and he sees uh, when he sees him growing he really realizes that from what he was and now what has he become so all in all that uh, there is more of deception there is more of hypocrisy right in the world as of now we really find hypocrites around us we might smile and say, oh, it's so wonderful to meet you. And on the other hand, within your heart, you're saying, oh my God, why on earth did I have to meet this woman? You see, so this is what even he feels, right? So let's go ahead and understand this a little more. You see the structure and the form of this poem. This is in first person and it's written in free words, like I said. Their regular uh, stanzas and uh, lack of rhyme uh, could mimic the speaker's distress and struggle. His mind is, co is, inco is uh, incoherent as a result of corruption surrounding him, right? Then the unpoetic seems natural and um, conversational. The audience is his young son, right? So the style of writing must be accessible and the message should be clear and simple. And actually, if we go through this poem, children, it is really simple and very, very easily understandable, right? The structure of the poem makes it seem like he's actually talking to his child, right? So we can see what our childhood really is and what it has actually become, right? So uh, let's analyze this poem a little um, more and um, let's have a critical analysis of this, okay? So uh, what is it like? Once upon a time is about a father teaching his son regarding the dangers of fake friendship and how times have changed. This infers that it would, uh, it, it is used to happen by the use of the word now because it shows that the present tense, in the present tense, it doesn't happen anymore because they've grown up. So you see, uh, there are places where you find different words like gone and so on and so forth so you can well relate and understand that uh, uh, he's he is in the present and he is trying to tell that gone are the days when this used to really happen and uh, to be very honest if we if we just see the title of the poem once upon a time so you can very well understand that this is in the present tense right and hence, like I said, it is in the first person, right? So, uh, the poet also signifies an emotion of disappointment and that he used 
and that he wished he had learned earlier on how to put on fake smile and deal with people right so uh, over and above that children uh, let's understand the fact that when we are talking of this uh, thing we need to understand that uh, you know uh, this is a satire on the society and most importantly uh, when we are talking about this poem we are talking about cultural uh, alienation right we are talking about a compromise that people have to make while they are growing up and there, that, uh, there seems to be a time when people really cannot you know do away with this okay it's like you know hand in glove it just goes on together right so let's understand this a little further that um he speaks regretfully about the present time when people are not like before he seems to feel that people have lost the innocence and openness which now which he now sees in his young son he wants to regain that innocence the poet displays how they used to be his friends and something must have transformed for them friends to keep running back to him even though they aren't really true friends hmm? so the setting of once upon a time is what and uh, the mood of the poem is nostalgic right this is the setting it's actually nostalgic and he is uh, re relating to the past every now and then the personality is remembering or let's say the persona is remembering how things used to be when he was young and innocent like a son the poem highlights the guilt and resentment an african man feels for himself to accept the culture of the westerners he notices a marked change in the attitude of his people those who were once so genuine warm and sincere have now suddenly turned cold and hostile towards him the poet's use of child like um uh, lexical field contradicts the poem's morals about growing up so once upon a time leads the reader to believe it to be like a story and the poet does present it in a narrative way but once we realize he is talking to his son it could suggest a fairy tale feel you know it's like a it's a fairy tale and actually because once we grow up we uh, we find certain things very funny and we don't really want to believe that so it does become like a fairy tale isn't it the poem is also structured like a mirror as the first three stanzas talk about innocence whereas the next three portray experience furthermore the poet is constantly reflecting on the two times of their life that is one is the past and one is the present so the poem receives sneering criticism after its release you see the poet's use of a child like a lexical field contradicts the poem's morals about growing up and the poem leads the reader to believe it to be like a story and the poet does present it in a narrative way right so this is basically what we can say about uh, uh, you know uh, the analysis of this poem so the alternations of uh, once upon a time are like the first stanza of the poem the poem tells about the conversation between what seems to be a father and a son uh, you know a conversation between them and what the father really feels hmm? uh besides let's understand a little bit uh, more about uh, this particular poem children uh, it's it's only fair to say that this poem is more ironic 
and why i say that this poem is more ironic i don't say that there is uh, you know uh, we are talking about the poetic device but why i say that this is more ironic is because of the simple reason that uh, the people they know that what they are is not really true they are not what they are showing to the people but they still want to live in that right when they are laughing and they know that they are laughing over something nothing they they don't really need to laugh on something like that but still they choose to laugh right they are not comfortable in something that they wear but they still want to wear it why because oh my what will the people say so you see it's basically this whatever we are doing we are not doing it for ourselves we are doing it for somebody else so what we really need to understand is that we shouldn't be doing this to ourselves every now and then so what i really want to say is that please always be yourself right you don't have to be what others want you to be right and that's why i said that it's more ironic and it's not just about africa anymore it's about everybody it's about the whole world being like this right so what are the poetic devices there is number one there is alliteration actually there are quite a few uh, poetic devices some i have already covered earlier let's continue a little more right because there's some of them which are not meant for you know children who are in class 8th and below so let's understand the poetic devices in detail a little more detail right first of all we have alliteration now what is alliteration when two or more words close together in a line begin with the same consonant right creating different sound textures like hands without hearts these muting things so show me sun or when i was right so here you can see that there's a alliteration what is assonance uh, when two or more words are close together in a line and have similar sounding vowels again creating different sounds so upon a time sun like a fixed portrait smile or uh, was like you i want so again we have assonance here uh, cesar is a break in a line where the reader pauses usually through punctuations feel at home so there is an exclamation mark there come again a full stop they say comma and when i come so you see there are there are uh, what there are there's a seizure in between there is actually a punctuation mark which is breaking and telling you okay the line has changed right then we have enjambment when a line runs on into the next with no stop or pause maintaining the sense for example the first two lines of this stanza and i have learned to to laugh with only my teeth and shake hands without my heart right so we have enjambment here similarly as i've already mentioned when something is compared to a different thing using the words like or as for example i have learned to wear many faces like dresses with all the conforming smiles like a fixed portrait smile like a snake's bare fangs right but then again we do have metaphor as well which is as i mentioned earlier also is an implied simile okay when we are talking about simile it's like they are, we are saying like or as we are comparing the two things using these words but in a metaphor we are comparing the two things but using their uh, you know um, we are not using uh, using uh, you know we are not using the words like or as but we are using their properties to compare 
so shake hands without heart all right so this is the poetic device these are the poetic devices and some major these are some major poetic devices which are used in this poem so well uh here i would like to end but i would again like to tell you all that let's relive and start all over again we don't really have to be you know uh, some fake person walking on the road right i'm quite sure you know if, because see actually this relates a lot to your ego as well and trust me people love to live with a person who is not very high headed and has a child ego so let's come back and let's start all over again right and then we can say yes once upon a time i would like to conclude the story which i began in the first video and we could say once upon a time there was a child who had a beautiful lovely smile and when he would giggle everybody would be happy around him and you know what that child lived on forever and ever well here i would like to come to an end thank you so much this is rachna once again and i hope we meet again very soon right bye bye